Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Sekigahara, the unification of Japan. This is the fifth printing. This is designed by Matthew Calkins and from GMT Games. This is one I've played before a long time ago and have never actually owned a copy of. I played it with a friend. This is not, to my knowledge, very solo friendly. There's a lot of hidden information and so on and so forth. But I think I think some people have tried to work on some solo rules. So hopefully uh, GMT1 or somebody in the community will come out with solo rules. If you know of any, please let me know in the comments below. But let's crack this open, see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. So while the complexity on this one is uh, a two out of 10, the solo suitability on this one is ranked a one out of 10. In fact, they'd probably do a zero if they could, but, uh, but uh, where there's a will, there's a way, right? So let's get started. All right. So we start out with the rule book on GMT's quality matte finish with some great, uh, classical artwork here and this comes in and let's see I'm gonna say 20 pages let's see if I'm right yep 20 pages uh, very very clear graphics examples uh, how to install the stickers on the blocks this is a block game uh, how to play the movement forces how to move there's a lot of hidden information in this one which makes it a little harder to solo but uh, but uh, in fact, the rules only go through page 12, and then we have historical notes. A lot of his history here, so you can learn a lot about the game, then the design of how you interpreted the history into the game. And there you go. So that's... All the author's proceeds from the first edition were donated to recovery from the Japan earthquake and tsunami of March 2011. So that's a pretty nice gesture. All right, then we have the Sekigahara reference card. Got two copies of that. Quality GMC, GMC, GMT cardstock. It's only one sided. So you got two copies of that and you get a bunch of stickers. So these stickers are gonna go on the blocks. You got label sheet one, label sheet two, and as usually, they tend to give you a lot of extras here. So it's label sheet one, label sheet two. Very nice graphic design on them. It's just not yellow. It's It's got a, it's got a texture, a, a graphic texture to it. Um, and then the different symbols are the ones, you know, for the different factions that you'll be able to play and group and combine them. <clears throat> we get them out of board. We'll take a look at shortly. But then we've got cards, our loyalty cards and our drawbacks for your blocks. Let's take a look at some of the quality of the cards here. <clears throat> GMT always does cards really well. I misspoke. I said the loyalty cards. They do actually say in the rule in the in the on the back of the box that the cards represent loyalty, but it's actually that's a loyalty challenge. This is actually the Ashida deck is the yellow, and the Tokugawa deck is black. And so the loyalty challenge is just one of the many cards, and then these are the different factions or armies that you can bring to bear based on those symbols and the strength. You know, they have one or two. And so that's basically all the cards are, is which cards you're gonna have in your hand to, to be able to play to, to move and to attack. So just a real quick look, there's the um, Ishida, Ishida deck, I got that right, and the Tokugawa deck. Again, different symbols, but basically functionally the same thing. I like how they have the name in Americanized and in Japanese. It's a very nice touch. Not that I can, speak it, but I can, you know, you can learn it. It's very cool. And then we'll take a look at that, that game board. It's right here. We're going to fold it out as best we can. It is, I got a very nice, very a linen finish to the board, which will help grip the, grip the blick, grip the blocks, but also give you a, uh, just nice tactile feel. This lays in a landscape mode, so it's hard to show everything here at once, but you got your turn track and you got your impact tracks that you're gonna track, obviously. And then 
you've got your map. Here, it's just starting locations of the various armies or factions or clans or however it's presented. It's a beautiful map. This is one of their best produced games. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It is really, really gorgeous. So now, one thing you'll notice is missing in a block game. It's not actually missing, I don't think. I think it's like, you just get an Easter basket, and you get all the candy out of the basket, you know, the store-bought ones. You'd like pull the grass up, hoping that there was something else at the bottom of the grass, which there wasn't, except some tape. I think our blocks, ta-da, are all under here. Nice gold blocks and black stickers. Big old massive bag of blocks. We're gonna lose that. So if you pick up a copy of the fifth printing of Sekigahara, the unification of Japan, you're going to get this big bag of blocks, which I'm gonna attempt to put the divider back in. But uh, so you get the big bag of blocks, you're gonna get those two decks of army cards. You're gonna get the beautiful mounted board we took a look at. Wow. You're gonna get the two draw bags. You're gonna get the two sheets of stickers, one sheet and a quarter sheet. You're gonna get two player reference cards and that short 20 page rule book, most of which 12 pages of rules. And then that mounted board, we're gonna try to get in there. And that's everything that comes in Sekigahara, Unification of Japan, the fifth printing from GAT Games and designed by Matthew Calkins. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you, bye-bye. Oh!